Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Anna Morfides with Many Hearts Counseling. And today's video is going to be all about self-concept, your self-confidence, your self-image, which literally comes down to your core beliefs. Your core beliefs are essentially the predominant engine that runs your conscious and subconscious mind which produce your thoughts and thoughts produce emotions and emotions produce behavior. This is what happens on a daily basis. From the moment that we wake up, we start to have thoughts that stem from our core beliefs, which is the exact same thing. It's a synonym to your uh, self-concept. So if you can understand what your core beliefs say about yourself, you're going to be able to have a handle on your self-concept or your self-image or your self-confidence and you're going to be able to have different thoughts, different feelings and different behaviors in your life. So somebody like myself who grew up with a anxious attachment style produces a negative self view, meaning that I think of myself down here and everybody else is up here until I understood that because when I was a child, I would get in trouble for everything. I was never told, I love you, you are good enough. I was never held. It makes so much sense to me now why I have had this anxious attachment as an adult to other adults to make me feel better because my inner child was still looking for it. I had no idea and until I was able to provide that to, for my inner child, then and only then was I be able to be set free. But in order for me to understand what I needed to provide to my inner child first, I needed to understand my core beliefs about myself and what produced that negative self view in the first place and what was my predominant engine that I was running in, running on day in and day out for the last, I wanna, yeah, I'm 44 now, but my awakening started at 38. I wanted to understand and live different. So if it is said that we come into our true self somewhere, in our midlife, like around our 40s to our 50s. Um, some of us are, I don't want to use the word lucky, but have a chance to understand and have an awakening even earlier. Some of us, it's never too late. It's a little bit later in life, but it doesn't matter when it happens. We're going to embrace it. If you're 20, if you're 30, if you're 40, if you're 50, if you're 60, 70, even 80, like this is a chance for you to do and live different. So core beliefs. I understood while I was doing mental wellness therapy that the core beliefs that run my subconscious and conscious mind were all these, and I'm going to read them out loud to you. I am needy, I am not good enough, I am unlovable, I am unwanted, I am unworthy, I am not good enough to be loved by others, I am bound to be rejected, I am bound to be abandoned, and I am bound to be alone. And just so you get a sense of what the other core beliefs are like, there are some that say, I am helpless, I am powerless, I am out of control, I am weak. I am vulnerable, I am trapped, I am inadequate, I am ineffective, I am incompetent, I am a failure, I am disrespected, I am defective, I am undesirable, unattractive, I am bad, I am different. I never really thought of myself I don't, as, as the other things. I feel like when I put my mind to something, I can do it. But when it came to the romantic relationships, my inner child was playing out the same scenario that it did as it was a child. It lived in that vibration of, I am not good enough. I am bound to be 
rejected because that's what always happened. No matter what I did, no matter how I showed up in a play, no matter how many A's I got in school, no matter how much I cleaned the house, no matter how many chores I did, I, I, I was just never good enough to be held in what my child self needed. Therefore, I have spent my entire adulthood trying to find it. Now I get it. So now I have liberated myself and now I am helping others liberate themselves. Well, it's always a work in progress. I'm still shown sometimes that parts of my old self are still with me, but I'm not going to judge it anymore. It is okay. It, 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 it is okay. And if someone cannot be with me in that space, then they're just not meant to be in my life anyways. And then I'm going to thank them for showing me what it is that I still, I still maybe need to tweak, tweak within myself. So when I get people that reach out to me and say things like, my person who broke up with me uh, made me feel less than, um, I never felt good enough, I never felt worthy enough of their love. I know right away, this is a core belief that you are also running on. So this person then actually just becomes a little bit of a gift because they're just showing you what your self-concept is running on. It's running on those core beliefs. That's what happens. When we feel things within ourselves that are ignited from the actions and the words of other people, that simply means that these thoughts, feelings, emotions are actually already existing from within us. They have, come, they have become part of our subconscious imprint. They have become part of our nervous system. It is a signal that your neurons fire. It is part of you and that's why you feel it. And every time you feel it is actually a different opportunity to relieve yourself from that by creating a new neural pathway through positive affirmations, through doing CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, and untwisting those core beliefs, through meditation to quieten the thoughts in your mind. And then the biggest one that I've come to these days is somatic therapy. Through breath work, you can actually get into your subconscious state of mind and release all these stored emotions. So all these emotions that I had stored in my body through all the shameful experiences that I had as a child, because I can literally visualize myself getting in trouble all the time. I just remember me just waiting to, to get hit. Um, just always like in such shame about myself, about everything that I did. And I was a kid, sometimes like I would just like fuck up. Like that's what kids do. I didn't, you know, I never did it on purpose, but I knew, I knew that I would, I would always be in trouble. And of course I created all these uh, unhelpful core beliefs about, core beliefs about myself, which were my engine later on, which was my self-concept. And therefore I would attract situations all the time to reflect back to me, my self-concept. I am unlovable. I am bound to be rejected. I am bound to be alone. So guess what happened every time I would go into a, uh, yeah, into a relationship with a masculine, that's exactly what would play out. To a T, like it's crazy. That's why self-concept is everything. Core beliefs are, are everything. I'm gonna put this list up of core beliefs so maybe you can take a look at it, if you can see it. I, I, I will actually put it in my description box as well and see what resonates with you. See what your self-concept is all about. This is what like Shelley Bullard talks about self-concept or other spiritual leaders. It's actually your core beliefs about yourself and you can heal those, untwist those, disprove those because they are never true. They're just things that we acquired when we were children and it's also like in my belief system, I know that I embarked on this journey, so there's no one to blame. I decided to have th this experience and I made it real yesterday. Um, I always like to talk about every time I decide to reincarnate into life, I always like to um, uh, give an example of being a woman and giving birth. Uh, you forget labor pains 
and then you decide to have another child. And then when you have another child, you're like, oh man, like why did I decide to go into labor again? It's the same thing about, you know, reincarnating into life or having this life experience. I forgot while I was up there how hard these lessons will feel when it's time for me to untwist them and heal them and become a different version of myself. I completely forgot and I embarked on this journey and I believe that all of us sort of do the same because that is actually the point of life. Whatever book it is that I have read, whether it's a couple therapy book, whether it's The Untethered Soul, whether it's um, How to Do the Work, whether it's Why Is This Happening to Me, um, One Day My Soul Open Up, A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle, like all these books point to the same thing. Even Brainstorm by Daniel Siegel, they all point to the same thing. We come into this life to experience a attachment style. We're, we're all gonna have one attachment style out of the four. We're all gonna develop some sort of core belief about ourselves. Might be unhelpful, might be helpful, you don't know. And then there's gonna be some sort of trauma and or wound that we're gonna acquire because as parents, we're not perfect. And even me as a parent, I'm quite positive that my kids have signed up to experience some sort of lesson with me, except now I have the awareness and knowledge though I keep asking them all the time, like, do you feel loved enough by me? Do you feel like I give you enough? Do you feel like you're worthy in my eyes? I ask them questions all the time because I don't want them to experience what I experienced. I hope this video makes sense. I hope that I have given you a little bit of insight on how you can change your self-concept and take your power back in every situation and or relationship. That way, instead of saying, this person made me feel like this and this, this, you can say, oh, wow, uh, what part of myself is attracting this? experienced in my life and how can I resolve it? Do I need to do affirmations? Do I need to do meditation? What kind of self-work do I need to do? This is where the answers and the power lies. As always, I'm wishing you so much love and gratitude. Thank you so much for being part of this journey of mine. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, I'm always willing and wanting to receive them all so please do reach out and uh, yeah i will see you next time thanks for being here